Thank you, uh, Tarima. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world right now. I join Mr. Linton Mkuno, Director General for Social Development, Republic of South Africa, in welcoming all participants to this important webinar. I also thank our panelists for their time and their expertise and for their willingness to contribute to this important topic. I congratulate the Partners in Population and Development, PPD, for organizing this webinar entitled Sexual and Reproductive Health and Reproductive Rights through South-South and Triangular Cooperation in the post-COVID era. I also congratulate PPD for the launch of this South-South Youth Platform that will give young people a more unified and louder voice in global and national affairs, especially those that affect their welfare. Today, the 1.8 billion young people aged 10 to 24 years old make this cohort the largest number of young people in the history of the world. We as the global community have to ensure that young people are not only listened to, but also participate directly in the development of their full potentials. Almost all of you young people were not even born yet when in 1994, the countries of the world agreed to a landmark agreement called the International Conference on Population and Development Program of Action, ICPDPOA. For the first time, there was a global commitment to realizing the sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights of people, SRHR particularly women worldwide. You now live in a world in which discussions about SRHR start with human rights. Now, millions of women have been empowered because of this fundamental agreement. And yet, who needs it? And we need your close collaboration. To cite a few examples, UN data suggests that 225 million women wanted to avoid pregnancy, but are unable to use modern family planning methods. The UN Youth Envoy reported that some 37,000 child marriages take place every day, despite legal prohibitions. Complications to pregnancy and childbirth remain the second leading killer of adolescent girls in the developing world. On HIV, AIDS remains a leading killer of women of reproductive age and of adolescents. So what can we do together? The, the UNAPE webpage, unape.org slash youth, set out a strategy for empowering and engaging young people. The UNEP Youth Strategy has three aims. One, ensuring access to integrated sexual and reproductive health and information. Number two, address determinants of health and well being, upholding rights and investing in human capital. And three, promote the leadership of adolescents and youth and their fundamental rights to participate in sustainable developments humanitarian action, and in sustaining peace. So how do you young people leverage the South-South and Triangular Cooperation Modality, or SSTC? As you know, SSTC is a development modality whereby governments or non-governmental organizations, youth organizations of one country, share knowledge and resources with their counterparts in another country, guided by the principles of equality and mutual benefits among others. This knowledge could include successful advocacy or uh, service delivery initiatives. Young people are natural networkers. 70% of you are even online, perhaps the largest age group that is online. 
you have the energy and ability to learn from others, which is basically what SSTC is all about. Governments, intergovernmental bodies like PPD and the UN should support youth groups in sharing lessons learned and networking across countries. This South-South Youth Platform that PPD developed aims to enhance the means by which you can share knowledge and form partnerships. So again, I congratulate PPD for this webinar and welcome the PPD South-South Youth Platform for leveraging SSTC in engaging young people in their own development. Thank you.